Wednesday, we're going to be doing a video on the boys' 1981 Monte Carlo. He actually dropped this off to us this morning before he went to work and uh, ended up taking our Tahoe to work. But uh, he's getting ready to go down to uh, our hometown of Port Huron. To uh, They got an annual cruise night down there. And it's this Friday. It's Thursday morning right now. Uh, so he wants to go down there and cruise with his brother. It's got the the 97, 97 Camaro, my oldest son Cody. So they're going to go cruising together for the annual cruise night down in Port Huron. But he wants me to change out, uh, get started changing out his radiator. He's got an aluminum radiator with dual electric fans like we got on the El Camino. So uh, he asked me if he could drop it off and I can get started on it while he's at work. He's gonna get out of work early and uh, come give us a hand, so or give me a hand. He actually got. Uh, you guys remember we got him these front runners. Well, me and the wife and uh, his fiance Danielle got him these front runner wheels for Christmas. He bought new tires for him, so he got them on. And I gave him these street tires to run uh, that came off the back of the El Camino, so he ain't burning up his. Uh, drag uh, radials his hoosiers but uh we had a set of 15 by 10 with five and a half inch back spacing and they wouldn't clear the they wouldn't clear because the frame ain't notched on this g body so he went and bought a set of brand new eight inch uh eight by 15s with four and a half inch back spacing and then he had the my old street tires mounted on there so he's good to cruise he can actually do burnouts now he said oh it's fun dad <laughs> i told you but yeah, he got his radiator in here, so we're going to dig this out and uh, get it all ready to go and see how far he get, uh, or we get before he gets back out of work. The old G-body. I always love these Monte Carlos. Like I told you guys in the past, my first race car that I ended up building was a 79 Monte with a 358 in it, or a 360, excuse me, a 60 over. 350 but uh he's got a kirky seat in here i told him i would have left the other stock g-body bucket in there but or put two kirkies in there but he's young he'll learn but yeah i just got his uh his cowl hood off there and sat up on the roof I'm, it's been cooling down for about a half an hour now so i'm gonna see if i can get this uh antifreeze drained out and uh start getting everything unbolted but uh yeah it's been hotter than a well digger's ass over here in michigan lately so uh it's still kind of early i think it's only 8 30 so i figured i'd get started on this before the heat of the day hits and uh see how far we get before he gets out of work so i'm gonna get everything set up guys and uh, uh get you on the tripod and uh we'll bring you guys back all right hang with us We got the, the fan off, the shroud off, and we got the coolant draining ever so slowly. It's almost actually done now. But uh, this is the big uh, V8 G-Body 3-core radiator I can see in there, but it's pretty nasty in there. I don't know how well you guys can see that in there, but there's a piece of shit hanging out of that top, uh, that top core, and you can see a little bit of gunk on the outer lip here. So I think this radiator's full of shit. No punt intended. <laughs> but yeah, we got that off. Uh, here's his new setup. You know, the aluminum radiator, dual electric fans. Pretty nice little unit here. So hopefully it all goes together well. Got a nice aluminum shroud with venting on it. Uh, that way when you're cruising down the road, it's letting air blow through too. It's letting air escape that, uh, you know, because these fans, they pull. 
the heat from them. They don't push through the radiator. These are puller fans. Uh, a lot of guys, I don't know if maybe there's somebody out there that don't know that, you know, they think that they would push the heat through, but I don't. These actually pull the heat away from the radiator. So, but yeah, um, we're, we're getting closer here. Comes with its own uh, little uh, temperature uh, switch that goes into the intake. A relay setup. This is a, the 40 amp, which I might step it up to a 60 amp. And uh, we're going to use the ground activation uh, toggle switch inside. Um, he doesn't have the right fittings for the, the temperature sender or temperature switch. But uh, you guys heard me talk in the past about these relays. When I'm saying a ground activation, um, these relays, your red is power from the battery. Your white is your activation switch. Black is obviously ground. And your blue runs to your fans or fuel pump or whatever you're using it for but if you take the red wire and the white wire and you tie them together and then you take your blue hook it to your fans you run your ground wire inside the car and to a toggle switch and then you hook the other side of your toggle switch to a ground source and that makes that relay a ground activation that way there's no hot wires you know you ain't, ain't gonna worry about running a hot wire from the battery all the way up or jumping off of your fuse box uh inside the car and uh you know you never heard of a ground burning down right so it's always better to run you know i always run ground uh everything on the el camino is ground activated uh, as far as toggle switches for the fuel pump uh the dual electric fans um i was thinking of running maybe two relays but this one came with that kit, so I wouldn't think, uh, you know, if I just stepped the relay up to a, a 60 amp, I think it would be plenty. I mean, why wouldn't they, if they wanted two relays for two fans, they would have gave you two relays. So I think uh, it would be safe with just the one. But yeah, like I said, we got all of his other stuff off here. Sorry for the glare. But uh, yeah, these uh, mechanical fans, I guess you would call them, it ain't a clutch fan. You know, it's uh, they rob quite a bit of power. If you guys watch Engine Masters um, with David Freiberger and uh, them guys there, they actually did a shootout on them fans, you know, on all types of different fans. And uh, that fan right there was 45 horsepower, um, 35 or 45, I can't remember which, but I know it was way up there. Uh, it was how much horsepower that thing was robbing by running that uh, mechanical fan on there, so... But anyways, guys, I'm going to let this, this thing finish draining and uh, start getting the tranny lines off. Um, we do have a new tranny cooler here, but uh, I don't think we're going to put that on right yet. Um, and uh, start getting uh, the hoses off and uh, get this thing out of here and get the old new one test fitted. So we'll put you back on a tripod and we'll bring you back when we get something accomplished. All right, guys, we pretty much got this radiator installed for him and all wired up. I got to get some uh, brackets here. I just got it held in there just to get it mocked up. I had to uh, cut a little piece of rubber to stick in here. These welds were pretty thick. As you can see, there's clearance here on this side. But uh, the tank was hitting here, down in here. We're pretty close on the corner there, but uh, I think I got enough clearance. Clearance on the bottom on both sides here. So, and it's in the rubbers. So, I think we're pretty good there. Um, I had to put his uh, spacer back on because obviously, when you lose the fan and the shroud and everything, you gotta, you're losing the spacer. You gotta need shorter bolts, which I don't have, they're a fine thread. But, uh, like I said, we got it all wired up to where he just touched the ground, out, which I got to, well, he's bringing home a toggle switch when he comes home from work. See the ground activation. So, 
as soon as he gets here i'll run the, the ground wire up and in we got the the hot wire all put into the the wire looms here the factory looms i don't know how well you can see that or not the glare of the sun's pretty bad but everything's all tucked away and hidden ice so he should be pretty happy i gotta invest in some uh i hate doing the tape you know taping these up like this but uh i didn't have no wire looms my stockpile on all my uh materials this is uh i gotta get a a bracket like this but smaller thinner and then uh because this is way too big and then i'm gonna bend it and then bolt it to this bolt hole here and then uh we'll uh self tapper it to the top of that and do it correctly but uh once again i don't have the correct materials here right now to to finish it to do it correctly he was supposed to be getting out of work early but uh obviously something uh came up at work and uh he never had a chance to so but uh, i'm gonna get ready to fire this up and let it warm up uh circulate all the fluid um i actually think that radiator is plugged a little bit um because i had to add a gallon of water i didn't lose a gallon on the ground i mean i might have lost a little bit but there ain't no way i lost a gallon and it still ain't up to the top so i think uh you know some of them cores and that were plugged up and not letting all the get all the fluid it can because when let me see this is a one two well oh, this is a four core well that would explain the extra gallon then this is a four core that's a three core <laughs> okay well i'm gonna fire this thing up and uh let her warm up so hang with us i'll bring it back when i get my big ass in here I think he's got the extra small Kirky baby. I think this is supposed to be a one of them car seats for a kid. I don't think it's a Kirky racing seat. I think it's one of them Graco baby seats. I can barely fit in it. I can't fit in it. When I asked you, it's hanging over. Look at it. I can't even fit in it. <laughs> this thing off guys i can't do it with two hands i'll get right back with you all right guys we pretty much got everything done as far as we can do until he gets here like i said before i gotta run the ground wire up and uh the cowl and uh i'm gonna let him climb in here man way he's got this interior the kirky seat and all that i'm not even gonna try and his skinny ass can climb underneath the dash and i'll help him get the toggle switch mounted in his little uh, thing there where the gauges are his face plate when he gets here with the toggle switch I told him to get a I told him to get a 40 amp toggle switch but uh, um, other than that uh, he's going to bring me some brackets we're going to get the brackets put on and uh, the toggle switch it's all topped off we have no leaks there was a uh, a couple little uh 
these fittings here weren't tight from the, I don't know, they just left them loose. There's one there and there's uh, uh, one here. They were dripping a little bit, so I just ran them in. It seems to be good. I let it idle for about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes in this heat. And it's probably 80 degrees right now. And uh, it's about 140 with the fans on. I know if I leave the fans off in this heat, it'll climb. I just wanted to see if it'll maintain uh, good coolant with the fans on. And it seems, uh, I think he's going to have to invest in a, a better alternator, too, now that he's running these dual electric fans. Because uh, when I hooked that ground wire up here with my jumper wires, it kind of, the engine kind of dropped down a little bit on RPM. So that's telling me that there's quite a bit of load on that. Uh, alternator i actually went to uh when we did our el camino oh shit the radio's gone let me turn this down real quick while we're in here uh, i upped uh, i stepped ours up i think that's like a 200 amp or a 250 because we got electric fuel pump we got dual electric fans so um, he's going to have to, he don't have to go probably that big, but he is going to be putting an electric fuel pump on it, uh, next year. So why buy it twice? I mean, if you're going to buy it, he might as well buy the same one I bought. Uh, it seems to hold up pretty good on all my stuff. So I wouldn't seem to think it wouldn't do any different than that. And that's a single wire, um, that'll get rid of, uh, all this stuff. All the single wire is you got, you just tape all this stuff up. And then you run uh, the single, I uh, think you got to go to a 8-gauge um, wire right straight to the positive post of the battery. So, money. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty good. Pretty, uh, that's probably going to wrap this video up here. Um, like I said, after he gets here from out of work, uh, I'm going to make him climb in there and uh, run the wires. And I'll go on the passenger side and help him hook everything up make sure they got good grounds we'll get the bracketry uh mounted up and uh i'll send him uh to get some shorter bolts to get that uh spacer off there kind of looks retarded on there but it is what it is i had to fire it up to get it you know all the coolant through the engine so we're good to go but uh yeah he's got a couple little chores to do when he gets here but other than that it's pretty much wrapped up, and that's going to wrap this video up. So, as usual, guys, till next time, I really appreciate everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. All right. Bye-bye.